It's one year ago today since the German Chancellor Angela Merkel said all Syrian asylum seekers are allowed to stay in the country no matter which EU state they first foot, uh, set foot in. Merkel has been heavily criticised by political opponents and some within her own party for this stance. Uh, Christian Dussmann joins us, Director at the Centre for Research and Analysis of Migration. Christian, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, you make three very pertinent points, or one pertinent point, and that is that this is um, uh, typicalised by, by, by three key challenges. One, the huge inflows continue. Two, the dire economics of many European countries. And three, the regulations, especially regarding the Geneva Convention for Refugees across European countries, uh, are open to huge interpretation as well. Um, to put it bluntly, it seems like an absolute mess based on these three factors. Well, it's a huge challenge for Europe. Europe has never faced uh, inflows <coughs> Uh, in a short amount of time of uh, that magnitude, uh, the institutions uh, as well as the various uh, interpretations of the Geneva Convention uh, are not really up for that. Uh, and what we are seeing at the moment, I think, is a very necessary process uh, of Europe uh, to face uh, and to, in the future, uh, deal better with uh, such uh, refugee migration flows. And it is very likely that this has not been the last time we are challenged uh, in this particular way. If we just look at the growth rates of populations in Africa uh, and at the conflicts we will have in those countries in the future. There are two reasons why people very basically want to come to Europe. One is that they are refugees, they are political refugees, they are displaced, and the other is that they want an economic better future. I totally understand why they would want to come to Europe for both reasons as well. But it's the latter group which um, people are trying to draw a line against and the former group trying to welcome but have we got the ability in Europe to welcome those who are displaced by war conflict uh, and are being pushed out of countries like Syria well the courts are doing that uh, if you look at um, those who uh, came and, and sought asylum in European countries between 2000 and 2015 only about 10 percent of those applications have been uh, approved as uh, asylum uh, asylum claims under the Geneva Convention uh, however, there are many other uh, subsidiary um, uh, statuses, uh, such as, for instance, we had in the former Yugoslavian wars, where people were not personally persecuted, but they could not live in those areas because of war uh, and uh, uh, the, well, the the the, uh, the problems which come with which come with that. Uh, in in the case of Syria, it is very similar. So not all of those who come to Europe are personally persecuted. But the war itself is making it impossible for them uh, to securely live in their country. So not just the Geneva Convention, but also subsidiary um, regulations uh, are helping these people at the moment to stay in Europe uh, until that conflict is hopefully very soon uh, resolved. I read an alarming story yesterday about Iraq and that Shiite militias in Iraq detained, tortured and abused far more Sunni civilians during the American-backed capture of Fallujah back in June than what many had thought and what went through in official reports. Doesn't this tell a story about who the enemy is perceived to be? Because we are bringing in many refugees who might see Western forces as their enemies based on what happens on the ground, despite all the good intentions about bringing stability. Some of the refugees coming in might think that it's Western forces that have brought the instability. Well, I mean, <laughs> So there is a lot of interpretation what are the particular reasons for which particular uh, individuals may come to the European Union. Uh, but the fact is that in uh, vast parts of Syria it is uh, very difficult uh, for people to have uh, a life which is uh, dignified and, uh, and, and secure. So the reason why we see more than one million Syrian refugees uh, only last year coming to Europe is certainly not that they have uh, ideological differences. Uh, which uh, well makes them uh, leave their country, but that them and their families under are under 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 severe threat uh, in the circumstances which we find in these countries. Uh, and under the Geneva Convention, uh, European countries, which are all signatories, uh, have the duty uh, to deal with this issue, and that is what uh, we are seeing at the moment. Of course, the challenges are tremendous given the huge numbers we are seeing. Uh, and the challenges are very unique for Europe. It has never happened uh, to the extent we are seeing it at the moment. Andrew, come in. And can I just ask, from the report, you say that um, there's still very solid support for the policies being carried out by Mrs Merkel. Um, 
you know, do, what do you see as the, as the profile as we're seeing, you know, there is more political pressure, there's more discussion from the neighbours and also within the country. And you know, do you see that support being able to be maintained to this level as we look forward as, as there is more angst and uh, I'm afraid you know, some of the terrorist uh, attacks increase and so change some of the, the, you know, the popular expectations? Sure, she is. Sorry, just before you answer that, I just want to let our viewers know they're looking at a live shot of in Ankara and this is where the Vice President Joe Biden has just touched down on Air Force Two and you can see the conversations that are taking place on the ground. Of course, the very conversation we're having will be front and centre about security in the region. Uh, if you can come back to, to the comment. Sure. I mean, uh, the situation at the moment is uh, very complex. Uh, that is very different to the refugee crisis we have seen uh, during the Balkan Wars, where Europe was much more in charge. And finally, uh, the resolve on uh, the side of the Western allies actually solved that conflict. Uh, at the moment, that is not the case. We don't really know how the future of Syria will look like. There were too many actors involved. Uh, that has been going on for quite some time, and that creates a lot of insecurity uh, in those populations which are actually receiving the refugees. We don't know how long they will stay, how long do we have to protect them, and when they can be possibly uh, resettled. That makes this situation uh, very complex. Now, coming back to your question, uh, we should not forget that Germany uh, historically has been a country where many people remember that there have been refugees themselves. So after the Second World War, the largest movement we have seen in Europe was the resettlement of Germans from the former uh, German parts of Europe uh, into uh, Western Germany and was that what was then the, the, the German, uh, uh, the, 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 well, East Germany under, under Soviet uh, dominance. Uh, so many people remember that and many people remember the hardship of that particular movement. Do, so Christian. I think to some extent this has created uh, a lot of, um, uh, well, uh, uh, positive uh, feelings uh, towards those people we are Christian, seeing. Christian, one right day now. we're going to have in Europe uh, a demographic issue on the fact that we're, gonna, we're an aging population and we're going to need um, younger employees and many more of them to look after us and basically to pay taxes. At the moment, that's not the case. We have a 10.1% unemployment rate across Europe, which you referred to in, when you said about the dire economic conditions as well. Is the timing just, just not right for Europe to have a large influx of North African and Middle Eastern refugees at the moment? And it just doesn't work uh, for Europe at this moment in time, bearing our economic situation is dire? Well, this is not an economic migration. So it's very important to make the difference. That is, an in, that is a migration which is based on refugee motives. So many people may have economic motives and the courts will clarify that. But a large part of these people are coming from regions which are under very severe uh, military uh, uh, threat and conflict. So this is not a migration which we have chosen to happen. This is a migration which has happened because of the conflicts in the Middle East. Now, coming back to the economic uh, circumstances you were describing, uh, that may be the case for Europe overall. However, just this morning it was in the news that Germany has again had uh, an economic surplus. So Germany itself is in a very strong economic uh, position, uh, which uh, very likely helps uh, Angela Merkel to uh, push through uh, this particular policy of her. Um, but we nevertheless always have to make a very strong distinction between refugee migration and we as European signatories of the Geneva Convention sure. are obliged to deal with those people under the Convention and economic migration. Chris, we're this is there. not an economic migration in the way it is because by military conflict. I get the message. Place. It's a very firm message coming from you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Christian Dussman, who is the director of uh, at the Centre for Research and Analysis of Migration, the acronym is CREAM. Right.